Did you all hear me loud and clear? I said, Happy Diwali. Oh, come on. I know that's not all of you. Come on. I want to hear a Happy Diwali. All right. Much better. So, before I begin, I wanted to say real quick, thank you so much to Miss Mona Auntie, who was kind enough to give me the opportunity of coming up here and saying my speech. So if everyone can give a round of applause to Miss Mona Auntie, that would be wonderful. I, come on, come on, I know you guys can go louder. Are we asleep already? All right, thank you, thank you. So my name is Amishi and I lied to you guys. So before we formally begin, uh, I just have to say my copyrighted lines. So whatever I say on this stage is purely my opinion, nobody else's, so please don't go around giving my parents a couple weird looks here and there. Also, I'm not here to offend anyone, so if I do somehow offend you, please don't take it to heart. After all, I'm just 12 years old and kids are taught honesty is the best policy. Am I wrong? Anyone? All right, so, all right, group in the back over there. Did you say happy Diwali? All right, thank you. So each year this festival rolls around and it's always the same thing from my parents. Amishi, the festival of Diwali is good over evil. Ravan was a bad person. Act like Ram, be Sita, and I'm sure you heard the same thing from your parents and now teaching it to your kids. This is exactly why I won't be touching up on this. Also, I ain't no teacher. Also, you should be teaching me this. But instead, I'm here to ask a question. And if anyone has an answer, just raise up your hand, all right? So if we are taught that Diwali is a festival of good over evil, then why don't we stand by that? Why don't we incorporate that principle into our daily lives? Let me give you a couple examples from my own experience. So we're starting off with renters. <laughs> I know a little too much about renters since I've been stuck in that position practically my whole entire life. But they never really get their security deposit check back irrespective of how well they maintain their house. And when they ask why, landlords never really give a reasonable justification. Movers. Movers are charged almost double, triple, sometimes if you're really unlucky, quadruple times the estimated price. So moving companies, they're like, all righty, so we're gonna take your stuff. Now you can either pay this ridiculously high price or say goodbye to everything you ever loved and cherished. So at that point, what you gonna do? You are being threatened. Oh no, you are being forced to pay that high amount. And yet, no one stands up for it. Well, at least my parents don't. And I know I'm throwing them under the bus, but whenever I do ask them this question, it's always the same thing. Amishi, choro, it's not worth your time. Well, maybe it isn't worth my time, but more importantly, is it fair? And is this what Ramayan teaches us to do? Just to let the bad get in the way? Cause last time I checked, and if you guys were watching the play, you should have realized that Ram and his supporters stood up against Ravan's bad intentions and that's how Ravan was defeated. Now, these are just some of the light examples. Now you might be saying, wait, hold up, this girl over here is crazy. Why should I be listening to her? If those were just the light examples, what the heck are these? Well, I'm sure that some of us might know someone who's not treated fairly at work, who has witnessed domestic violence, who has uh, been harassed or discriminated, yet not many people stand up for it. Why? Well, actually wait, you know, I'm too poor to afford 
afford a watch, but by the looks of it, it seems pretty late. So tomorrow, what's tomorrow? Sunday, right? Sunday? Yeah. So Sunday, nobody's working, everyone's free. So go into Staples, go buy yourself a really nice notebook, be blind to the price, get a matching pen, and write, make a checklist. And write down each time you stood up like Nam and became a tall brick wall against our modern Ravanas. And if you aren't able to do it, I might just relax you just a bit. Because I do understand it is the modern age and Ramayana might not hold as much truth as it did back in the past. But next year, when I come on the stage, proudly hand over that checklist and say, this is what I did to be like Ram. And if for any reason, Miss Mona Auntie, if you don't invite me next year again, not a problem. At least invite me back to collect all these checklists I'm handing out. I want to see who took it to heart. Now, if you'd like, you can 